It is not uncommon for me to have a patient express some fear or concern that they might really be addicted to sugar. This is a concern a lot of people share. Sometimes I tease patients and say, if we all acted on all of our cravings and desires, we'd probably all be in jail. There's a lot of people out there expressing concern that maybe they're addicted to sugar. And maybe you're one of those people as well. And it is so common to hear people say, I've had sugar withdrawal. I always have sugar cravings. Um, by the end of my day, all I want is sugar. I try to eat healthy, but I still go back to sugar. Or I got off of sugar for three days and I couldn't handle it. Sugar was all I could think about. I talk to 15, 20 patients a day about some kind of nutrition related topic and all of them go back to sugar. But any substance that gives gets a psychological, emotional, physiologic, and hormonal effect in our bodies, we can begin experiencing addiction type behavior toward. And sugar certainly counts. One of the problems people have as they fight to overcome this is that they go looking for answers and unfortunately they become susceptible to a lot of quick fix or just do it this way or jargon or even pretty complicated process that's very difficult for an individual to sustain. Now, all techniques have their target audience and their ability to be successful. So I got no problem with a particular technique, but I will tell you that my approach is 100% physiology based. In other words, how does your body want to work? How is it supposed to work? What are the cells and the tissues and the hormones in your body actually doing? What do they want to do or what are they supposed to do? And also, how are they misbehaving or not working properly? One of the things I teach people about is called cellular dysfunction. One of the challenges that doctors have is we don't have the ability to test everything all the way down to the tiniest detail. I can't run a test to tell me how a particular cell in your body is functioning. We do have things that tell us secondary or tertiary results. Let me give you an example, blood sugar. If I check your blood sugar, what that tells me literally is how much glucose is in your bloodstream. And we know what the parameters are and diabetics who check their finger sticks, they know what the level of glucose in their blood is. But this is not a direct indication of cell function, it's an indirect indication of cell function. One of the weaknesses of this type of test is we begin to get the impression that high blood sugar itself is the problem. High blood sugar can cause problems, but it's not the main problem. The main problem is the way the cell is malformed functioning. Have you heard of insulin resistance? You probably have. And it is one of the terms we give to cells that are malfunctioning and no longer able to properly get glucose from the blood into the cell. That is a main type, probably the most common type of cellular dysfunction. What does sugar have to do with all of this? Well, there's every evidence that along with processed carbohydrates, but sugar itself is one of the main drivers for insulin resistance and therefore cellular dysfunction. Now, sugar has its effect in our body, in our pancreas, in our liver, but it also has effect in the brain. And there is a location in the brain that just loves to get a hit of sugar. By the way, it's the same location that loves to get a good hit of cocaine, which is not something I'm suggesting, just to help you understand, they're the same place. And, and this is why the concept of a sugar addiction is not so far-fetched. What happens is that when that part of your brain doesn't get regularly stimulated by sugar, it starts sending out signals to you and it doesn't tell you in a script, excuse me, I would like some more sugar, please. What it does is it sends a subtle message that gives you this overwhelming craving and urge to get something sweet. And you won't think of this as a thought in your head, you'll find yourself wandering around the house, you'll get out of bed, you'll go open the fridge and you'll say, what am I even here for? People will get in their car and drive and end up at the convenience store. They will go to their neighbor and ask for something sweet. Like all of these complex behaviors are driven by this craving and this urge to get something sweet. So what I want to talk to you about is one, to affirm that this is a real thing and it's a problem and perhaps you're dealing with it or someone that you know is dealing with it, but also 
also, what steps can we take to break this cycle and to get back on a healthier pattern? The first step is to recognize this for what it is. Without judging yourself, with no guilt or shame, just acknowledge that this is where you're at. Sometimes you're wandering around the house looking for wherever you can find sugar. As soon as you raise this to your consciousness, you're letting the frontal cortex of your brain, which is where thoughts and decisions and executive control come from. You can still have the craving, but maybe you don't have to act on it. So that's the first step is you got to recognize it. The second step is to ask yourself, is this really what I want to do right now? Is this my goal right now? And if it's 11 o'clock at night, the goal is probably not to eat an unlimited amount of ice cream. Probably the goal is to sleep. So then if your goal is not to eat a whole bunch of sugar, what could you substitute? This is where you're gonna have to do some preparation. If you don't want to actually end up eating all of that sweet thing, then probably you need to have prepared your refrigerator or your freezer or your pantry with something else. In my office, I'll give people a list of our safe foods and healthy foods that are an option, but I'll give you a couple right now. But let me say first, you remember that spot in your brain that really wants that hit of sugar? It will accept other substances. So anything a little bit salty, savory, or with the right kind of oil in it will also satisfy that part of your brain. And this is very good news because if you will use this little physiology hack, life hack, you can overcome a sugar craving, substitute it with something else, and begin to turn your health around. So here's some ideas. Maybe you could try some boiled eggs, have those around, or deviled eggs. I don't know why, I prefer deviled eggs over boiled eggs. And they're very easy to stop at the grocery store and get some pre-made. Cheese cubes. Personally, I love Munster cheese. I don't know why, it's so creamy, a little bit salty, just the right softness. I just love a little bit of Munster cheese when I get kind of snacky. Nuts are a great option. And I gotta tell you right now, I don't plug a lot of products, but shout out to Planters Peanuts and their savory dry roasted peanuts. And I've always loved their standard dry roasted, but the savory takes it to a whole new level. And I gotta be careful that I don't overeat those. But that's a great choice for you to just stop and snack on. There's healthy oils, there's fiber, a little bit of salt. Give it a second and your body is gonna be saying, okay, thank you for paying attention. I know we had a craving for sugar, but this was great and it satisfied me. I hope you found this really helpful. And if you did, please subscribe to this page because there's a ton more videos out there.